But it is 12 in your town day. We always get excited for those. Hello, are you there? Uh, for 12 in your town, we ventured to Montrose, to the Montrose Historical and Telephone Pioneer Museum. You just might find this place is calling your name to visit, Christina. There's over 700 telephones on display. You could easily spend hours inside of the Montrose Historical and Telephone Pioneer Museum off Hickory Street. M Live and the Flint Journal uh, rated us as the quirkiest museum in Genesee County. Joe Follett is president of the Montrose Area Historical Association. The first three cabinets are by manufacturer. He has this museum memorized, kind of like people used to do with phone numbers the only telephone museum in the state of Michigan. He gives tours to school groups and visitors where they can see what Michigan's first telephone looked like. The first basic telephone was basically uh, a Campbell soup can string phone. And learn what party lines were like back in the day. Hold it up to their ear and they can listen. And oh, there's, someone's talking. And there's two ladies, well it's a recording, and they're talking about cooking and they never they never stop never stop there's also an interactive display showing how phone calls are made with automatic switches hello the queen telephone operator herself lily tomlin this is miss tomlin who played ernestine on laugh in has given a nod to the unique museum wyman jennings uh, a local Montrose person owned the telephone company here in this building. It was eventually sold and fell into the hands of the Historical Association. For $10, the Historical Association bought this building. Members decided it was their mission to preserve Jennings' telephone collection and add to it over time. A lot, a lot of people have put many, many hours uh, into this to make it what it is today. The museum features other displays from yesteryear. It also has a local genealogy database with more than 144,000 names. These drawers are full of newspapers that have all been read and put into the computer. The museum operates today thanks to a grant from the Jennings Foundation. For Follett, it's a chance to not only recognize the engineering feats of man over time, but also keep history alive. You're going to see an awful lot of things here that you're never, ever going to see again. And the best part, it's cheaper than a collect call from a phone booth. This is free. Oh, I had so much fun there. That is such a cool museum. I know, and those who run it, they take great pride in it. And as you heard, the best part, it's free. They encourage, you know, school groups, you name it, to come through. There's so much to learn, so much to see. So my thanks uh, to the Telephone Museum there in Montrose for having me. How neat. I love that they had the little recordings and just so much information up there. And the first phone in Michigan, that's so cool. Very cool. We're feeling really groovy for this next stop uh, in Clio. At Club Vintage Fashions, what's old, Christina, is in vogue once again. Take a look. That was always my dream. I wanted to have a store. Kathy Hammond loves vintage clothing and has amassed quite the collection over the years. It just kind of got out of hand. <laughs> but her obsession was born out of sentimental roots. I started buying vintage clothes at estate sales, garage sales and stuff. I started buying stuff my mom used to wear. I lost my parents really young. After years as a special education parapro, she took the leap buying this space in West Vienna Street in Clio. Rehab the building. Um, retired from the school and two weeks later opened the shop. Besides the exquisite fashion, inside you'll find Hennessy the store cat. Hennessy! And Kathy's special assistant. This is my son Tom and he helps me here. He vacuums, he takes the garbage out. I pay him a few dollars for doing things and he spends it all on pull tabs. Yep. <laughs> hey, you like helping your mom out in the store? Yep. Kathy has made a big name for herself in the world of vintage. I sent a dress to the Boston Museum of Fine Arts once. Selling pieces online long before she opened the store 10 years ago. I used to dress Greta Van Fleet too before they got before they got big. There's the signed picture they gave me of them with Elton John. She's also worked with Hollywood a time or two with shows like the Astronaut Wives Club, which aired on ABC. I overnighted them clothes three times for that. And she helped style Leo DiCaprio in the movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. The very last scene, Leonardo DiCaprio is in a pool and he's wearing a swimsuit and the jacket is called a cabana set. 
and he's wearing that and it came from here. A lot of people, it's a memory store, they'll come in here, a couple ladies will come in, oh my grandma used to wear this or my Aunt Emma wore this all the time and that type of thing. And you never know people's motivations for going retro. I've had people come in here to buy clothes that they want to be buried in. I've had people, I've had people come in here. I have a lot of girls that are pinup girls. They do pinup photo shoots and, and things like that. For Kathy, it's keeping the memory of simpler times alive. They're made much better than clothes today. The quality of the fabrics, the quality of the sewing, all of that. Plus, they just, they're classy. For her, it's not a hobby, but a lifestyle. They're not throwaway clothes. Basically, today's clothes, you wear them a few times, you wash them, they start looking yucky, you throw them away. These clothes, I have things here from the early 1900s all the way through the 1990s. Hey, I think I'm inspired to try out a new look. What do you think? Hey, why aren't you wearing that today? <laughs> hey, listen, that collection is amazing, though. I mean, she said that what's, it is in, impressive. what's in her store is just like 10% of what she's amassed over the years. Wow. And, it, and it's quality vintage clothing, you know, yeah. and she's, put, she's traveled the country collecting well, this stuff. Just hearing some of the people oh, she was, that she has styled. I know, she was and, cracking me up. She oh was so gosh. casual about it. She's like, yeah, I styled Greta Van Fleet for a while. And then, you know, Hollywood's contacted me. She told me that Courtney Love called her once about a pair of shoes she had in her store. Um, so yeah, I had a lot of fun there. Wow. Really nice, uh, really nice lady. I enjoyed meeting her. I, and I could have done like an hour documentary on her, honestly. Maybe there's a reality TV show that can come from her <laughs> store. So if you're into retro, check it out there in Clio. Very, very cool. Yeah, your dress is a little retro looking today. I like it. It's like little 60s bit. blocking or something. Yeah. I think she'd approve. I hope so. 412 in your town in Mount Morris, a restaurant gaining some attention for its mouth-watering comfort food. You'll get a full plate and a full belly at Smoky Butts Barbecue and Pizzeria. Take a look. What you're getting here is real barbecue. Just off North Saginaw Street in Mount Morris, you'll see a sign that will probably catch your attention. At least that's what customers say. Oh, Smoky Butts, I saw the name and I just had to, I had to check it out. It all started 10 plus years ago with Tom Choate's catering business. I was out the dare. We were watching Pitmasters on TV one day and my buddy said, uh, you think you can do that? The next day, he built a smoker and started entering competitions. I took seventh in the nation in ribs. And Smoky Butts was born. Well, everybody just kept wanting butts. Wanting butts, wanting butts. And I said, man, all I'm doing is smoking butts. And I'm like, here we go. That's the name of it. He and his wife, Jennifer, bought what used to be La Villa Restaurant a year ago with the old owner guiding them. He taught us all the recipes, so we thought, well, we'll give it a shot. And we did. We tried it. And it was good, but it wasn't his thing. So they decided to focus on Tom's bread and butter. Well, really, his good butts. I was like, you know what, honey? That's what, that's what your name is. That's your brand. So let's just go ahead and keep it. So now Smokey Butts is a brick and mortar and a mobile business. He's a barbecue guy. That's what he does. I've ran with the same rub from day one when I started. He's dedicated to his craft. You know, I, I want you to enjoy what you're eating. And Tom knows food. He's worked in the industry off and on since he was 15. He's the brainchild of every dish. He makes up stuff all the time. And I'm like, we got to put that on the menu. And he's like, we can't put everything I make on the menu. I'm like, but it's good. His latest greatest invention? The hog trough. That was all him. He just threw a bunch of stuff together. He said, taste it. I said, it's delicious. He said, that's the hog trough. A concoction that keeps people coming back for more. It's kind of a signature dish for him. It's nacho chips. And then it has brisket, pulled pork, uh, macaroni and cheese, baked beans, um, coleslaw, and barbecue sauce, and of course, nacho, nacho cheese, of course. They serve about six to 10 a day. People come in here just for that. It can feed two to three people. I've never seen anybody finish it, ever. If you're still not convinced, Jennifer says you should give them a try for one reason. Well, because this is the best food. Okay, here it goes. You know I'm not going to back down to something called the Hog Trough Challenge. I just may be here till 2024 to finish it. <laughs> hey, I brought that back to the newsroom. Yeah. And uh, that's a small, by the way, that comes in two sizes. And that thing was gone in a matter yeah. of minutes. But, uh, you know, it's like basically your whole meal in one. A lot of good food there, and it's not just barbecue. They do deli sandwiches, uh, pizza, strombolis, you name it, but they were so gener generous with their helping, so 
I'm sure, like I said, it went so fast in the newsroom. I, I was not here that day. I would have liked to partake. Bummer, Kevin. Yeah. You, you missed out. But mouthwatering yeah. stuff, you got to check it out next time uh, you're in Mount Moore. So thanks to Smoky Butts. Kind of fun to say, right? You got it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>